we've got a wet spark plug um so there's water at the bottom here which can only be an indicator of one thing what's up guys and welcome back to part four of this 2005 yamaha r1 rebuild i hope you guys enjoyed the previous episode guys we got the bike to finally start up and run uh, it wasn't perfect because we did notice a couple of things but uh, we are moving forward so if you noticed we had some smoke coming out from the exhaust uh, we want to have a look at that in this episode and see what's really happening with that and then also at the end of the episode i showed you guys a leak that we saw that was uh, it seemed like it was coming from the stator cover but we want to inspect that because it might just be coming from somewhere else and then just uh, dropping from the stator cover something else that we picked up was uh, a bit of a vibration or a noise on the clutch cover so we want to inspect the clutch take it apart and see if those clutch plates and the pressure plate is sitting okay so yeah those are the key things i want to look at in this episode i think we'll start with that leak um, try and trace where it's coming from and then we'll go over to the clutch um, see if uh, all those pressure plates are sitting nicely if there's nothing funny that's happening there and then we'll start the bike up let it run um, see if that smoke that we noticed goes away um, if it doesn't we'll have to do some further investigation uh, fingers crossed it's not what i think it is i'm really crossing my fingers here but yeah guys let's get on to checking out that leak and we'll move on to the rest of the stuff okay guys here we are back here again um we took off the stator and the stator cover i didn't show all that because you guys have already seen us taking that out uh, but the reason we took it out was to try and see if maybe there might be uh, a hole or something here. Yeah, I don't know, something where, the, where the, the water might be leaking from because we checked right over here and there was a bit of a crack. So we wanted to see from the inside if there's a crack as well, but it seems like it's only uh, coming from here where the bolt sits. We did some further investigation to try and identify where the leak is coming from and uh, I think we might have found it. So it looks like it's coming from um, right here, this base gasket here between the barrel and where the engine is. Um, there's a gasket here and we suspect that that gasket might be messed up. So uh, it seems like we're gonna have to uh, disassemble this whole entire engine guys and try and replace that gasket. We actually suspected there might be something wrong here because we've always seen these uh, sort of like uh, markings here these white markings here uh, and normally those are formed by coolant so it means this bike has been leaking coolant for the longest time so yeah guys <laughs> seems like uh, we've got quite a bit to do as far as this bike goes okay so i think we're gonna carry on with the plan we're putting back the stator cover and we're gonna move over to the clutch basket to inspect that and see why it's making that um, vibrating noise and rattling a bit. Um, we want to do that first because I also want to get the bike to run and idle for a little bit because if you remember we had some smoke coming out from the exhaust. We want to see if that smoke might potentially be <laughs> a blown hat gasket as well. So yeah, let's check out the clutch basket, um, sort that out. Get the bike to start up, um, run it for a little bit and see if that smoke goes away. Okay guys, we've got the clutch cover out um, and we've been looking around to try and see if there's anything that's obvious. And when we look right over here, I don't know if you guys can see properly, but we suspect um, some of these clutch plates might not, might not be put in properly. So um, we're gonna sort of strip these this clutch out, take out all the plates here and see if everything is all right. As we've got all the plates out and the rings um, immediately we noticed the way the 
some of the rings were put in wasn't correct and also these uh, clutch plates here were super dry so we're gonna need to soak these in oil just so that when they go in they are nice and wet one eternity later okay guys we've got the clutch plates soaking in oil uh i think they should be good now so we're gonna take these out and slap them back on the clutch basket here uh we're gonna put these the way they're supposed to go in this time so hopefully we won't have that rattling or vibrating sound we had before okay guys we're gonna put this ring on first um it's gonna go in like this so if you see here we've got a side that's like a little bit smoother here on the ridge then we've got a like a more like harder ridge so we're gonna put the smoother side in first like that then um, we're gonna have this ring next uh, if you check here I don't know if you guys can see but it's written outside so we're gonna put this curved side facing in like that and then we're gonna start putting in our plates smaller plate Hey, who's the man? It's him. Mm. Yeah, I told you. A few moments later. Ah, guys, this bike. So we put the clutch back in. Everything was all good. Um, we're like, okay, let's try push start the bike, get it to start up so it can run idle. Um, so it ran for a little bit, but obviously because the the the, the stator isn't charging the the battery. Uh, the battery basically died. So we tried starting it again with another battery, uh, but now the bike didn't want to start. So um, yeah, we decided to take apart the, um, or at least remove the, the, the plugs to see if they weren't flooding or anything. And lo and behold, guys, we've got a wet spark plug. Um, so there's water at the bottom here which can only be an indicator of one thing. Our head gasket is blown. So yeah, that explains obviously why we've got those um, coolant marks on the side. Uh, possibly that might be the reason why we've got the leak um, that we've got on the stator cover or that's dripping down the stator cover. So yeah, guys, I guess we're gonna have to replace the head gasket. Uh, we did say we need to also replace the base gasket as well. So yeah, we're gonna strip the engine, take it off and <laughs> get to work on it. Maybe we'll also check the, um, the valves as well while we're there, do like a um, valve check, uh, make sure that everything else is fine. But yeah, guys, that's what we're sitting with now. We basically have a um, blown head gasket. So basically in order to remove the engine here, um, we're gonna have to get the tank off, um, get the air box out, undo the throttle bodies, get them off the engine, uh, basically undo these, um, these engine mounts uh, so the engine can fall off. Um, I, don't, I don't think we'll take the engine off completely. We'll just get it forward enough so that we can remove the head uh and basically we can so we're able to work on the bike so i guess the these also need to come off we need to get the exhaust loose um we'll see maybe the radiator yeah we'll take that off uh but yeah guys that's basically what we need to do it's not a small task uh but i guess we have to do that so let's not waste any more time let's um and let's <laughs> I don't even have words because I'm like, yeah, this bike. But yeah, let's um, get this engine off.
all right guys we've got the tappet cover off uh it's pretty straightforward to remove it you just undo these bolts um and now we've got the cam caps exposed so uh right now what we're trying to do is just uh mark off our top dead center here so when we put everything back we don't struggle too much um once we do that i uh, will take off the cam caps um and then start undoing the head bolts so there's some bolts in there and these bolts on the side here then we'll be ready to take off the head okay so we've got the timing cover off uh we're trying to get the bike to top dead center uh we've got a marking here so we're trying to get that lined up um but now we're seeing here normally you've got or at least with other bikes you've got um some markings on these um, camshafts here so you've got a exhaust marking and an intake marking so we're not seeing them here so we're suspecting they might be on the inside so we're going to keep turning uh this guy here until we get that top dead center then we'll check behind here to see if we've got everything lined up. Then, yeah, I think we should be good to now start removing the cam caps and these camshafts. Okay, we've got the bike at TDC. As you can see, here's the top dead center line right over there. It's lined up with the case. And at the top here, um, yeah, like I said, we don't have these markings on the outside. We actually have some dots, but what this lines up to is some markings at the back here. So I don't know if my phone will catch that, but there you go. There's a marking there that's at top dead center. Um, so I think what we're going to do now is basically make our own markings. So we're going to make a marking there, make a marking there and also there, just so that when we put everything back together, we don't um, <laughs> have a headache. So let's mark these up and then take off these cam caps. Okay, there's our markings there. Let's see, we've got one there and another one there. There's the last cam cover off. Mm. There you go. Okay, cam covers off. Cams are also mm. off. Now we need to undo the exhaust header, get that off so we can take our head off. Okay guys, we've got the exhaust headers off and right now we're undoing these head bolts here. Um, seems like they also weren't on that tight. So uh, we're just gonna undo all of these then we'll be ready to take off the head. All right, guys, we've got all 12 screws out. Uh, the moment of truth, we're gonna try get this head off and see how this gasket looks like. All right, we've got the head loose, uh, but it won't come out. Uh, we need to undo this engine mount here so the engine can fall forward but obviously now we still have our exhaust here so what we'll do don't mind that mess guys so what we're gonna do is undo the the exhaust linkage which is somewhere here um just so this whole exhaust can come off and then we'll drop the exhaust forward and rest it on something here Let's bring it to here so they can see it this side. Uh, there you go. There's our head, guys. There's our head. Okay, guys, here's a close up of the head gasket. And I mean, you guys can see how bad this thing is looking. You've got rust everywhere, which obviously tells you that, you know, water was making its way through and then um, it just sat there. So. Yeah, we definitely need to replace this. <laughs> we need to get a new one. 
Okay, while we have our head off, I guess it's a good time to inspect our pistons. So, as we can see, uh, that's just the uh, coolant or whatever. But as we can see, the pistons don't look too bad. Um, I mean, considering this bike has like 36,000 Ks, um, the pistons look all right. So yeah, I guess we just need to clean off this surface here, get our new get gasket and slap that on, do everything in reverse, put everything back and hopefully we don't have um, a leak anymore. All right, guys, I think we're going to end this episode right here. Uh, we've done quite a bit, actually, a lot more than I thought we were going to do when we started this episode or even started this build, actually. We've stripped off the head. We've taken out uh, the tank, the throttle bodies, the radiators out. The bike is stripped, guys. Uh, as I walk around here, there's like parts all over me, all around me. But um, I mean, uh, like I said previously, with these rebuilds, you never know what you're gonna get until you actually get into fixing the bike and sometimes it's straightforward sometimes there's some easter eggs just waiting for you to find them so yeah guys i really appreciate you guys for watching uh please hit the like button hit the subscribe uh hit the bell icon if you haven't to be notified when part five drops i'm gonna go order this head gasket and then I'll catch you guys in the next episode where we put that back on. Uh, hopefully the flywheel will be here along with the uh, stator, sorry, the starter clutch, yes. Um, and we can slap that on, start the bike up without pushing it. And yeah, guys, hopefully this time this bike will run smoothly. So yeah, guys, I'll check you on part five. Peace out.